My name is Tom Vogel. I'm CEO of the Mountaineers. We're thrilled you could join us today for this rally supporting permanent reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. The Mountaineers is a 13,000 member organization. It's one of the leading outdoor education and conservation organizations in the country. And there's no coincidence that the Mountaineers was founded 113 years ago here in the Pacific Northwest. I don't think it's an overstatement that we live in one of the most remarkable places in the world. The natural beauty of the Pacific Northwest is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why the Mountaineers exists, and it's one of the reasons why most of us live here. It's the reason why Pacific Northwest cities such as Seattle have become some of the most vibrant urban areas in our country, and it's the reason why permanent reauthorization of the LWCF is so critical now. The LWCF was created 53 years ago and has become one of the most uh, important conservation and outdoor recreation programs of our lifetime. Here in Washington State, it has provided more than $700 million for public lands and outdoor recreation. It's provided critical support for, area, for areas such as the, uh, the Mount Rainier National Park, the Alpine Lakes Wilderness, sections of the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Mount Side Conservation Area, just to name a few. These places are national treasures, and they're right in our backyard. They give us joy, they contribute to healthy minds and bodies, and they support a vibrant outdoor recreation economy. Here in Washington State, we generate more than $26 billion a year in economic value and more than 200,000 jobs as a result of outdoor recreation. We have a unique opportunity at our feet to support public lands, our way of life in the Pacific Northwest, and economic value of the outdoor recreation economy. It's time to permanently reauthorize the Land and Water Conservation Fund now. Who else to lead off, to better, uh, better to lead off this rally than Jim Whitaker? He's the first American on the summit of Mount Everest, the first permanent employee of REI, the first CEO of REI, and perhaps most importantly, Jim has been a tireless, tenacious, and lifetime advocate for public lands. Welcome and thanks for being here today, Jim. Okay. It's so good to be here with Senator Riel, uh, fellow mountain climber, uh, active, and doing a hell of a battle in the Senate uh, for us. Uh, so in 1955, I was at the co-op, the only employee at the time, and uh, on the second floor of the Green Apple Pie, above the Green Apple Pie restaurant, Six and Pike, a two-story building. Now there's a 45-story building. Anyway, our office for the co-op was down the hall from the Mountaineers. And so the combination of the Mountaineers and our co-op members was great. I'd stand at the door. If there wasn't any business, the Mountaineers walked by, I'd grab them and pull me in and sell them something. <laughs> so anyway, we grew. It was a little tiny outfit, and we grew. Uh, now it's a over two and a half billion dollar company with an outfits all over, and getting people outdoors, getting people into nature, getting people into where they can learn to love something. And if they learn to go out into nature, they'll learn to love it. If they love it, they'll vote for it. And so we can preserve some of the land and some of the water and the beautiful uh, areas of the whole world. And so that is the plan and what we want to do. And so what what is best is that Maria is fighting for all this and has been for a long time. You've, you've, been, a, you've been a senator for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a battle, as we know. So now we've got this land and water. What's more important to the planet than land and water? What we do here in, the, in Washington can go out, not just Washington State. We're not just talking about America. We're talking about the planet. We're talking about all life on the planet. When you stand up high where there's no life, no oxygen to support life, and you look at the planet, you realize we're so damn lucky to be here. Yeah. It's such a precious planet we're on. Every day is a gift. And so all of you people in nature and the outdoors, get them out. Get them into it. Do what you can. Fight. Do what's possible. Okay, now let me introduce the next outdoor enthusiast, Dan Nordstrom. Nordstrom, you know that name, pretty big in retail, right? Nordstrom, I took John Nordstrom, his uncle, to the 
with me to the summit of Rainier. And, and so the Nordstroms not only have the retail uh, thing under their belt, they've got the outdoors. And we're lucky to have Dan another Nordstrom that's going outside, seeing things and Rainier and doing stuff that, that we want other people to do and not just in America, but around the world. A safe and clean world for our children and their children and their children. Okay, Dan? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll say the winner just because I'm tall enough to, to stand next to you. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody. You know, it, it's, uh, Wally Stegner said that uh, national parks were America's best idea, and if that's true, then LWCF may be the second best idea. Uh, We've had, and I think for too long, the LWCF has been kind of a bargaining chip in the sausage making of the legislature. And this this idea of permanent authorization has been a dream for since you started in the Senate, which was so long ago. But you were 30, so it's, it's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> um, and you know, I think that the, it's really important. And my role here is really just frankly to recognize Senator Campbell and her leadership. Um, I've been one of many people that is wedge my way in there to make sure she heard things from her staff. And by the way, her staff is amazing. She has been working on this. This was going on all last year in the last session. And um, we thought maybe it was going to happen last session. But then, you know, into the night, late nights, and this thing was a complicated bit of sausage making. Lots of people didn't and maybe still don't want it to happen. And you pulled out all the stops to sort of find a way to get it through. And it is, it is still kind of stunning that we're here and able to do this. And so I just want to say thank you to you and your staff. Are you still new mayor? I think so. Yeah. Our new mayor, our, our best mayor now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. What a great day. Look outside. Is there any prettier place on the planet than Seattle, Washington? Um, I am so thrilled to be here. I want to thank the Senator for all of her work and for Congresswoman Del Bene, who I'm going to be introducing in just a second for her work. You know, we think of the outdoors and we think about our national parks and Rainier and everything, but here in Seattle, these, this will also help us in place like Discovery Park, South Lake Union Park. Um, we are using this money for our own conservation right here at Magnuson Park. So this is not just benefiting the planet and the country. Right here in Seattle, we know you don't have to get out of Seattle to enjoy the outdoors. And so I want to thank the senator for her tireless work for environmental issues, not just this issue. And for the congresswoman who, thank goodness, is in the majority so we can get this passed. Um, can we hear for that? You know, it is, it, it is a great pleasure to be mayor and, and to be on the stage with uh, Jim Whitaker is a, truly a pleasure for me. You know, a, a childhood hero and you think about Everest, Everest got nothing on him compared to towering giants. Um, and one great story I heard backstage and I got to share it because it's so quintessentially Seattle that on one of his climbs on Everest it was sponsored by Rainier Beer and they brought cases of beer with them. So it's not just him that, that, that climbed right here. So it's great to be here in the outdoors, and I get the, the pleasure of introducing Congresswoman Susan Del Bene, who has been just a tireless advocate for so much that we need here, not just in the Northwest, but on climate, on parks, on the outdoors. And thank you for all you're doing, and now it's yours. Thank you. Thank you. Well, like Mayor Durkin said, we have a beautiful day today. It is great to be in the, in the Better Washington. Um, and I am incredibly happy to be here today because of the progress that we're making on Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, we've heard some amazing people who worked hard to help get us to this place, but um, we definitely know we're here because of the leadership of Senator Campbell, who got this through the Senate through a, just a ton of work and effort. Um, she is tireless and persuasive. And so I also just want to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Now it's time for the House of Representatives to take the legislation and pass it, and we will be looking at doing that maybe as early as next week, um, because we all know that protecting our public lands starts right here in our own backyard. Um, I wanted to um, kind of highlight some of the places in the first congressional district that LWCF has made an incredible difference. Um, 
I was talking to Mayor Baker, Mayor Baker from Kenmore, who's right up here, um, St. Edward's Park. Um, many of you have been there, beautiful spot. Um, um, LWCF made a huge difference in making sure we have that as a park. Um, Marina Park in Kirkland, many projects in Kirkland. More recently, the North Creek Forest up in Bothell. Um, Artist Gadget, Guadalupe and Scenic River, um, Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest, Ross Lake National Recreation Area, and of course the North Cascades National Park. That's Just to name a few of the areas that are impacted right here in yeah, our region that's by the Land Water Conservation Fund. And that's before we even mention all the farms, the local parks, the sports fields, the fishing, the wildlife viewing, um, and other outdoor recreational opportunities that LWCF has funded throughout our region. Um, as Tom mentioned, all told, WCF has contributed more than $700 million to Washington's economy. And by passing this legislation, we'll be adding millions uh, in annual LWCF spending and thousands of new jobs um, throughout the country and right here in our state. So, as many of you know, send it 
to an amendment process and to try to change or uh, fight some of the provisions, but I'm pretty confident that our colleagues in the House will prevail and we will be able to push this forward onto the President's desk, which I hope the President will have the good sense to sign this important legislation. So why are we here? Well, we're here because in the 1960s, Scoop Jackson championed this program because the landscape was changing in the United States. We were urbanizing and developing, and people realized you needed some outdoor space. So it has, as my colleagues have said, put so much into the Northwest, over 600 projects in the history of our state, and it has given us so many opportunities for development, just like here at Sandpoint and Orange G. Magnuson Park, turned it from a naval air station to a 350-acre park with sports fields and communities and gardens and boat access. There are other things here uh, from our state, like the David E. Brink Park or the Marina Park or Marsh Park or Bridal Trails. Uh, Inspiration Playground in Bellevue is another example that was helped by the uh, Land and Water Conservation Fund. And uh, other parts of our state have benefited from it as well. So hopefully when this legislation is signed into law, projects that are on the books, that are high on the ranking list, a new uh, South Park Park, just uh, south of the Georgetown area, which I know the community very much wants, a park in Linwood, and uh, Willapa Bay National Wildlife Refuge. These are the things that we can get done if we permanently reauthorize the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So we're here today to say to everyone, please, let's get this last push done. Let's make this program that helps us generate $26 billion in state revenue, supports over 200,000 jobs. But as the people who said before me said it just so eloquently, there's nothing better than just being outdoors. And it's such an important part of our Northwest culture. So fighting to preserve it and fighting to preserve this tool has been a great honor. I know we will do more to protect our outdoor space, but we will do it by not allowing people to demean this activity, but to bring people together. Hikers, hunters, fishermen, environmentalists, mayors, business people, and show that the outdoor economy is a true winner for all of us. Thank you very much. Representative Delveni, the Land and Water Conservation Fund in the Republican-controlled House survived one vote by uh, once by a margin of I think four or five votes, and the leadership of the House Natural Resources Committee tried to eviscerate it to change uh, change the program. I'm interested uh, what your sense of the vote will be in the House now, and particularly whether uh, the House will vote as decisively e.g. veto-proof majority, as did the Senate. Well, I think we have a strong support in the House, obviously a very different House um, with Democrats in the majority. And we will look at bringing the bill up next week. It potentially would come up on suspension, which means it would come straight to the floor um, and would have a higher threshold for votes. But we might have those votes to be able to do that um, because there is strong support. Another one. Um, one of, I think, a lot of people in this room's favorite views of the Cascades is to pull off a Washington Pass up on the North Cascades Highway, look over at Silver Star, and presumably be hit by the thunderstorm that is going over Silver Star. But the view encompasses the upper part of the Metal River Valley. Um, this is changing the subject, but I'm interested in what you did there, particularly uh, due to the fact that the Canadian mining company wanted to uh, wanted to be drilling uh, test holes and so on there a few years ago. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for the question. We didn't really elaborate on all the things that are in the Murkowski Cantwell lands package, but it truly was a package of uh, legislation. I think maybe from all 50 states, and so there was a lot of land policy to work out. Uh, and I do think that is why we have a lot of support, at least Congressman Bishop, who you uh, alluded to before, is supporting this package. The question will be whether he can talk to his uh, more conservative colleagues into supporting this legislation. But again, that's why we represent, why we fought so hard 
on telling the story of the economic value of the outdoor economy and building that coalition so it was a broad coalition. We did the same when it came to the Mental Headwaters. We wanted to say to people that it was worth, uh, uh, I can't, I'll get you the exact number, but it was worth millions of dollars to preserve the recreational economy of the Mental uh, more than a mining opportunity that would come and go in a very short period of time. And that the community came together as a community to represent that viewpoint. So we think that this, uh, there's only, I think, two provisions of this act, uh, one in Montana uh, by Glacier Park, and this particular proposal in the Mental that are mineral withdrawals. That is, that we are saying that you will no longer be able to consider development or mining activity in these areas. So we're very proud of that accomplishment as well, because we think at a time when we had a new administration coming in, trying to use uh, the Antiquities Act in reverse, and trying to say we need to basically turn land back into more oil and gas development, we think the provision of getting LWCF permanent and basically taking mining development rights out of Mental were an important way of showing that there is great bipartisan support that says, no, wait a minute, the outdoor economy is now third in the nation behind healthcare and finance, that it is a strong economy, and that's where the future economic opportunity lies, not in the mining opportunities. Senator, how concerned are you that you'll need a veto-proof majority from both houses? Well, I, it makes me feel good that if we have one, um, because one, I don't want to have to worry about the politics there for a lot of different reasons. And uh, two, uh, I'm trying to build support for the concept writ large, the one I just mentioned, that the outdoor economy is important to a lot of different people and it's also a great economic value, a great ROI, if you will, for the American public. And I think if we do that, then the next phase of what we're going to try to accomplish is some of our backlog on our uh, public parks lands and also making sure that uh, we'd like to attempt making Land and Water Conservation Fund mandatory spending. Why do I say that? Because so much of the money that's collected for this purpose goes into an account and is not spent on uh, land and water acquisition. So we're going to try that. So we're going to just keep, we'd love the president to get on board with this agenda. We'll see what he says. And uh, it, I just hope that all our colleagues see the benefit. There's a Washington Post op-ed about um, a piece of the bill not involving the land and water conservation fund that just portrayed a piece of this bill as a, as a, a land giveaway. Um, I don't know if you've seen that op-ed, um, but it involves um, uh, American Indian corporations, and, and uh, I just wanted to get a comment on that. Well, I'm not sure exactly which uh, of the various proposals in there, but I'll look that up and, and talk to you. But I, I definitely think that these are all hard-fought discussions with local governments and local communities. And um, I find Utah probably to be the most interesting, where the president is trying to use the Antiquities Act in reverse to take some of that land away. Here was Orrin Hatch basically helping us get in a wilderness designation, you know, for a great deal, you know, of that area. So clearly, there are people that um, you know disagree with know some of these overreaches on the other side but I guarantee you like all of these proposals had to have the uh, bright light shown on them and worked out with a lot of various uh, individuals and communities or else they just didn't